Well, Nat, uh, welcome to the, the podcast. How are you, man? I am doing awesome. Glad to get another week under my belt. Kids are headed for uh, fall break. So I'm kind of like, how do you have fall break when, you know, it's like, like school hasn't, like, have you really been doing school? Like what's going on, you know? Yeah, I, you know, my kids are online. So really the break is nothing, right? So, and we would normally go visit colleges during this time period, but we, we can't do that, right? So it's yeah. it's kind of a dead time from that standpoint. So are well, they doing... Um, Virtual college tour, like what exactly? I, my oh, kids yeah. aren't that old yet, but yeah, the virtual college tours. My daughter's been going through a bunch of them, but it's not the same feel, right? You can't figure out, you know, the kind of the the feel, the vibe when you walk through the campus, and, and that's so important. But unfortunately, that's the reality of today is everything is is online. So, but I know I drive drive by one of the local colleges, and it's uh, I see they actually it's kind of like diff, you know, been a disruptive year. They've got like the school or somebody must have provided like kind of these fire, like burning pits or fire pits. And so they have like, you know, you'll see like 10 or 12 chairs set up in a circle and then like a fire pit. So I don't know how much learning is going on these days, but. Well, I think it's just get them out, you know, where they're yeah. safely distancing and stuff like that. So I, I would have never thought the colleges were going to get opened and keep the kids there, but they're, I think they're doing a great job with it. So, yeah. So Are you, you know, having enough uh, bandwidth at your home office for, <laughs> for with the Zooms going on? Yeah, we've got uh, a ton of Zooms, right? So there's five of us on Zooms every day. So uh, a crap. lot of bandwidth is, is being used. So I think from that standpoint. But, you know, I, and I think about this pandemic, Nat, and, you know, this has been a big deal as COVID-19, seven, seven months in or so. And, but I think there's something even worse that's happening, right? And we'll call it. Uh, what the, could be worse? <laughs> the, I think, I think people are getting, uh, and I love Zoom, but I think they're getting Zoomed to death. I, I, yeah. I really, I think this Zooming, my poor daughter, right? She's in high school. It's her senior year. They do seven hours of Zooming. Holy cow. And, and she said the other night, she goes, dad, I, I can't concentrate after like five hours of this. I, I can't take it. She goes, but the school is being very, very good. They're saying, listen, you guys just need to get better and, and focus more and just look out the window for three seconds. It'll make it all better. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> and, but it's like zoom is now our life. Right. So like yeah. we did the holidays. Uh, we did like Easter. We did, we zoomed it. Right. We get together with friends with zooming. Everything is zooming now. We're zooming it in. <laughs> so, so our kids, you know, like three years from now, when they're going and getting therapy, they're going to say, you know, I, I had this Zoom thing, right? I, you know, I just, it, it killed me. So are you seeing the same thing with your kids? Yeah, they're doing quite a bit of Zoom. Um, I think it's driving them a little crazy. My, like my 16 year old doesn't even play an Xbox anymore. I think he's just screened out by the end of the day. Um, just wants to go, you know, lift weights or do something, you know, more active. Um, so I think, you know, that's good. I mean, you just, as an entrepreneurial family, you just kind of have to roll with the punches and try to teach your kids to, to go with that, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think we're all trying to just do our very best. We have our, our home offices and we're, we're getting by it. But I think it, uh, it, you know, we're kind of losing that that touch, right? That Because that, yeah. you know, we want to be around people and Zoom, it's, it's hard to, you can't hug people on Zoom and, you know, I guess you can't hug anybody now anyways, but, but I think this <laughs> idea is just, it's, it's crazy. Um, but I think the long-term impact, I was just reading something where they're saying that it's going to be more important to get these kids back to school. The damage of not being there, you know, is worse than actually going to the schools. And, and I, I believe that. Yeah. Yeah. The kids are so social, right? They just, you know, Half of half of going to school is just goofing off with your buddies. <laughs> right. yeah. Absolutely. And it's the social. I mean, can you imagine if you had a first grader and a third grader doing Zooms all day long from your house? Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Our kids are all a little bit older. So it's, you know, they're a little bit more self self-sufficient. But that would be. Yeah, I don't even want to think about that. <laughs> yeah. so. Uh, so next, who we have? Who we have today, Pete? Oh, we have Sharon Cupack uh, from Echo Maids. Uh, Sharon, welcome. Hey, Sharon. Hi, Pete. Hi, Nat. How are you? Well, welcome to the Hire Yourself podcast. It's great to have you here today. You know, we've been uh, trying to get you on here. I know you're very busy. Lots of great things going on at Echo Maids uh, from that standpoint. Lots of wonderful momentum. And so I know, Sharon, you are you are an industry expert. You've been in franchise. How long have you been in franchising? I know you got a great career. Jeez, you know, I just had a big milestone birthday, and I hate to even date myself because it's a weird birthday. But uh, it's been uh, 24 years in franchising, 
and uh, really excited. I mean, who we're all in franchising. So, you know, it's not like we woke up in the morning when we graduated college and said, oh, let's get into franchising. You fall in and you just, you never leave. Yeah, absolutely. So with Ecomades, uh, how long have you been with Ecomades? So I started with Ecomates when Happiness, which is our parent company, acquired the brand. So it's been since May of last year. Okay, good. And uh, Ecomates, a very cool concept. Uh, you know, you and I have talked about it before. But uh, tell me, when was it started? How, how long has it been around? Yeah, so it's got an interesting background. It actually started uh, back in the 90s when eco-friendly and green wasn't cool. You know, nobody wow. cared about it back then. And it really didn't take off. However, one of the franchisees that came aboard way back then, about 10, 11 years ago, is our CEO, Lindsay Della Sega. So uh, fast forward to last May, Happiness acquired Ecomades. We raised Lindsay up to be our CEO and uh, we're starting history making right now. Oh, that's awesome. So how, how many franchisees do you have? We have 26 franchisees, 48 units. So we wow. are just shy. We've basically this, this growth has happened in the last six months. So we're just shy of 50 units in six months. It's crazy. Wow. Now you guys are playing in a space. There's a, there's a lot of competition in, you know, kind of the residential cleaning. And so tell me a little bit how you guys go to market, how you separate yourselves from everybody else. So kind of give me you know, the three or four things that your secret recipe, what, what makes you guys so special? Mm -hmm. So, you know, honestly, Pete, I don't think so much about the competition. It's out there, but it's pretty tired. Most of the residential cleaning space is already uh, grown and they're, you know, legacy brands. So we don't, we've come in and just sort of shook up and disrupted this whole space with our entirely green, eco-friendly, more importantly, science-based cleaning. So it's a whole different level of uh, taking care of clients in residential and like commercial properties. Okay, so uh, why don't you tell us about, the, tell us what the, the science behind it, what, what makes it so special, right. so green? Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a great question. When I joined Ecomades, I, I cleaned like my mom. We all clean like our mom. I never once thought of the science behind the protocols. It's the methods in which and the ingredients that you use that gets the results that you're looking for. So Lindsay, our uh, CEO, has her degree in science and her master's in sustainable business. So this is right up her alley. She's run her successful franchise for ten, over 10 years now. And what she put together was a system where using natural products, and I'm not talking about household natural products, but natural products, um, the way that you use them is what gives you the result that you're looking for. So it's completely different. So even with our employees, they're not maids, they're not cleaners. They literally are science technicians. Wow, and how that's that very cool. The business. It's very cool. All right. So you got to slow down with me because I'm slow here. So right. first, let's start with the, the product, right? So you say it's a natural ingredient. So what does that mean, natural ingredients? So am I using lemons or what, what am I using? Yeah, not at all. So we use, uh, we have a formula, proprietary formula that's made in a lab in the United States, so easily accessible ingredients. And um, uh, for example, instead of using a phosphoric acid, which is a full on chemical acid, we use a natural salt base. Um, mercuric acid, which is derived from natural ingredients. So what we're doing is substituting the chemicals for a natural version of that chemical. Uh, one of the ways, here's an, another interesting fact, one of the ways that we kill viruses, which we've always killed, uh, flu viruses, and now of course COVID is using a commercial grade plant-based non-toxic, really strong uh, peroxide. Mm -hmm. And, but here comes the science lesson. It's how you apply, it's the protocol, the method in which you use the ingredient that actually kills the virus. The ingredient itself won't kill it unless you use it the right way. 
Wow. So your, your products are used. Don't leave any kind of residue. So my kids are safe, right? If, you know, if they put it on the counter, the counters doesn't have any kind of toxins left over when it's been cleaned. That's correct. To the point that you literally can take a squig out of our ingredients. And I know this because I did it. When, when oh, no first, way. Seriously, yes. you did? <laughs> when we first acquired Ecomades, uh, a small group of us went out to Portland to spend a week with Lindsay, and she was explaining the ingredients. And, and she goes, these are ingestible. I mean, do you want to ingest it? Probably not, but they're ingestible. And I said, well, okay, let's do it. And I took a swig of it, and it tasted awful. Can I just say <laughs> awful? But I lived. There was no damage done. So you're absolutely right, Pete. So if, if, so, if, so as part of uh, becoming a franchisee, do you have to drink the, you know, you notice I drink the Kool-Aid, but do you have to drink the cleaning stuff to become a franchisee? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should require that during training when we get through virtual training. <laughs> well, you know, I guess it would be a great thing to prove to your, your customers, right? So, okay. So the product separates themselves healthy, safe, from that standpoint, really cool. Now tell us a little bit, if you can, I, we don't want you to give away any of the secrets, but when we talk about the second thing for you, it's the way in which the, the stuff is applied, right? So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, let me give you an example of one. So our glass and window cleaner, just so you would think it'd be normal. Uh, most cleaners like Windex have ammonia, which can be very dangerous, of course, and alcohol base in them. So that's you spray it on your mirror and you wipe it off and you're good to go, you think. Ours has no ammonia, no alcohol in it. So when I first heard that, and I'm sure you guys have done this at home, you take your Windex, you spray your mirror, you start wiping and what happens? It goes away, right? So what do you do? You stop wiping. In fact, all it did was evaporate because it's made of alcohol. So you're not really even cleaning. So there comes the protocol of using the right ingredient, but you actually have to use a little bit of elbow grease in there and, and actually clean whatever surface you're using. Holy cow, you actually have to clean. All right, I want to make sure. So, <laughs> all right, so, so the technique is it's a way in which the product and it's the way in which you work the product or, or clean it, right? So if I'm cleaning a bathtub or something like that, it's again, it's about leveraging. It, you have to work a little bit harder to clean or, or what does that mean? Yeah, not necessarily on all surfaces. Um, let me try to give you another example, the peroxide that kills the viruses. Uh, when you when you use Clorox wipes and you go around your house and you're wiping surfaces, everybody's super, you know, um, uh, nervous about COVID germs in their home. So you go and you wipe it. Actually, what that's doing is getting rid of germs, bacteria, and dirt, but not even touching the virus. So the protocol in which you, the method in which you get rid of a virus is you spray. In our case, we're using peroxide, and you let it dwell for a period of time and it depends on the surface. So you let it sit okay. and then you go back and you wipe it off and that's, it's given time to eat the virus versus got spray it. and wipe. Okay, got it. So it has to, you gotta give the product some time to work. That makes a lot of sense to some me. Of them. Mm -hmm. All right, so superior product, everybody else, right? I can feel safe in my house, a superior way in which you apply the product, right? So it takes time or a little bit more energy from that standpoint. Now tell us a, a little bit about kind of how uh, Ecomades finds customers, right? So how, how do you, I mean, again, a very crowded space, a lot of people in their mature brands. So how, how, how do you help the franchisees find customers? This is, I think, where we really shine. We're part of the Happiness family. So Happiness is our parent company, which also owns Lawn Doctor and Mosquito Hunters, really solid, really uh, aggressive brands. And all of the support is centralized through Happiness. So the marketing is one big centralization. So we actually create the franchisee's demand digitally. So through our digital efforts, um, we create their demand on a local level. And then all they have to do is back it up with people seeing the brand on the street. So they're not, they're not the ones that are going out finding their customers. We are actually attracting people to them, to their site so that they get the quotes. 
And they go to the house and provide a quote. Do you guys have special vehicles with branded vehicles that your your team members show up in? Or is there anything special about how you brand yourself as you, as you go to people's homes? Mm -hmm. So that's a two part. So we, we the franchisees do not actually go to somebody's home and do a quote. I mean, they could, but we have a sales center that does all the selling for them. So really, we, you got to tell us about that. That's so cool. Tell me about uh -huh. it. So actually what happens is uh, when the demand is created, somebody might see our really cool Ecomobile out on the road, the Fiat 500Ls, and they will go online and request a quote or they'll call into the sales center, which is based out of, it's our employees based out of Happiness Office in New Jersey, who then will do a quote based on information that's provided and get the credit card information send that information, that information's logged into our technology. And then the franchisee goes ahead and schedules them and, and routes them for services. So the franchisee is actually not selling, which is pretty attractive to a lot of candidates that they don't have to go hit the pavement, knock on doors, hey, can I clean your house? They're not doing that. Okay, so I find you digitally and I say, hey, I'm, I'm interested. You're uh, Ecomades processes it, they do an estimate and they say, Pete, it's going to cost $150 to do your house, whatever the number is. And so then the, the, they schedule it and the, the team shows up. Is that right? Is it two or three people showing up to a house? Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Yep. So the, the sales center sells it, the franchisee schedules it, routes okay. it, and then a typical team would be two people that show up in a vehicle uh, branded with Ecomades. Okay. So does the does the franchisee have to buy all those vehicles then? So do I have to have a fleet as I grow? I got to go one, two, three, four vehicles. I've just got to keep adding vehicles as I add teams. Yeah. So they actually lease them through a leasing relationship we have with all of our brands under happiness. So they get a great deal. Uh, and this good thing you brought that up because this to me is a really uh, exciting and, and smart way to scale a business. So we talked to our candidates about the fact that you don't you don't have to necessarily add a location or add more turf to grow your business. You add a vehicle and two more employees. So when the first vehicle gets to a, a, a break point where they've done so many services a day, so many days a week, as that is that demand is increasing, you add one more lease payment, which is not that high with two more staff and off you go and you grow. So, you okay. know, to do a like a million dollar business, for example, they'll have seven or eight vehicles and okay. we give them marketing consideration off of certain vehicles. So local ground game marketing consideration we take away uh, because those vehicles will get them business all day long. So they're, they're driving billboards, for lack of better terms. Okay. So tell us what makes you guys special in regards to training the franchisees. So what what's special about how you, you train your franchisees to be? So I think what's really special is it's actually our CEO that's been there, done it, that does all the training. It's her system. It's what she built. So you're getting it from the best. Lindsay says, our CEO says, you know, I took the stairs so our franchisees could take the elevator, which to me just sort of, I sat back and thought, that's an amazing line. She mm. did all the hard knocks so she can impart that and they can get up easier. So not only Lindsay does training, but all of our marketing subject matter experts and technology experts. And then there's ongoing, obviously, and being an emerging brand, uh, franchisees get a tremendous amount of love. Tremendous. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's yeah. nice to have a CEO that's done it, right? And mm -hmm. so kind of leads by example. How do you help the franchisees find the, the cleaners, the, the people that are doing the, the or, or we'll call it, uh, what did you call them, scientists or? What, what Science technicians. Science yep. technicians, thank you. Yeah. How do you find them? Yep. So that's, uh, you know, that's also a little bit more of a unique process for us. So we actually help find their ecotex for them uh, by doing what's called geofencing, where we, we take our marketing efforts, we go into their backyard digitally through social media, and we look for people that have been in the cleaning space, and then we directly market to their feeds and say, hey, do you want to work in a safe environment, something that is, uh, you have the room for advancement, because that's another unique uh, feature of Ecomades is the room to grow up within the organization. And then uh, do you want to make more money? And they click on the ad, they fill out the information, it takes them through a digital 
interview process gets down to the point, sort of weeds out people that don't meet the criteria, gets down to a point where the franchisee will get resumes. They select who they want to interview and who they want to hire. And uh, it's, it's been an amazing effort uh, on behalf of the marketing department. Our franchisees right now, one day of advertising, they're seeing over 50 applicants one day. How do, how are they able to provide advancement opportunities as well as just, it sounds like better pay than the other companies. So uh, how are they able to do that? Mm -hmm. So that's the culture of Ecomates. That's a huge differentiator. Uh, One, we start them higher. We budget in, we start them at a higher rate of pay to be more competitive, but we're also hiring up. We're hiring technicians. We're hiring people that want to go somewhere with their with their career, and then we um, offer them room for advancements. There's different levels of responsibility within the organization that they can take on to earn more, and then on top of that, we do a paper performance program, uh, which gives them opportunity to earn uh, more income and help support their families. But then we even take it one step further. And once they, uh, let's say that they, for two months, they, uh, they did exactly what they should be doing and they are up for a pay raise as a result of the activity. It's a point system. Uh, at that point, then Lindsay's system has allowed them to decide how to spend that, what they earned. So they can take it in their paycheck, they can take a day at a spa, they can take a day off, they can gift it to an employee, a colleague of theirs that maybe needs a day off that can't afford the day off. So it's account, it's all about respect and accountability and giving people the opportunity to be more than just a maid. Just oh, a that's a, it sounds like an amazing culture. Mm-hmm. Uh, it really is. I hope they have an opening for me here uh, in, uh, in <laughs> Illinois. Uh, so here's the, the big question. You know, we've been through a really tough seven months here with this COVID-19. Can you tell us a little bit of how it's impacted or how, you, how the leadership team or how your franchisees are working through dealing with COVID-19? Because you're going into people's homes, right? People are a little worried about having people come into their homes. So tell us a little bit about how you guys have had to address the COVID-19. Sure. Great question. So, you know, middle of March, everything COVID hit. Um, what we did was because residents uh, in residential properties sort of freaked out. They either went more aggressive, wanted more services or less services, or they just stopped. And we were allowed because we're an essential needed service to work in all states. Uh, We pivoted really quickly in the middle of March and we started capturing that demand for disinfecting more than anything. So we've always had educational messaging. We're a culture of improvement with the science behind our products and our, our protocols, but we took that and we completely pivoted how we went about business and we went after the disinfecting side um, and started marketing to light commercial to yeah. keep businesses open. We added an electrostatic mister. So it's a handheld mister that you missed a non-toxic mist over top surfaces to pre- protect from COVID. We went from doing light commercial properties once a week to every day, multiple services a day, high profit margin. But in the meantime, when May came, the beginning of May and things started opening back up, we saw this huge jump in residential service because people were just over it. They were sick and tired of being in their home. They didn't. They knew why they didn't want to clean to begin with. Now they really didn't want to clean. It, it took even one step further. Um, there, there's international and national cleaning associations that conducted all types of surveys uh, from users, uh, people that had cleaning services. And the biggest thing is this became an emotional buy buy back actually into services. So it went from, I don't want to clean. I can't clean healthy wise. I can't clean to, I need to feel safe. I need reassurance that my home is safe or my business is safe for my employees and my patrons. And that was what the statistics showed us. So we immediately pivoted, prospered and captured the demand Mm -hmm. There was this huge demand for disinfecting and there was not enough supply 
to accommodate it. Most of your competition in this space is mom and pops out there. And they weren't in a position to be able, they might be good cleaners, but they're not good marketers. And secondly, they didn't have product. Chemical based products are sourced uh, in a different country. Uh, China specifically, so hen- why you don't see them on, on store shelves, that cleaning companies have the same challenge of getting those chemical-based cleaning products. So um, as much as we feel for the COVID environment, um, you know, we really try to fill that demand and we were able to capture that. So we have not seen anything, Pete, uh, negative to do with people not letting us in our in their homes or their businesses. We yeah. did enhance our protocols, disinfecting our uh, the shoes that the ecotechs wear, wearing masks, that type of thing, and that will continue yeah, going sure. forward. Wow, that's amazing! I, I just never knew from a standpoint. Well, it sounds like some great things are happening at EcoMaids, and and you got to be very proud of, of what you've done so far. So, where do you see it going? I, I know you guys have got of explosive growth, but where where do you see yourself kind of finishing up this year and and forward years? Yeah, great question. We are uh, super excited about <laughs> the growth. I mean, we literally, I feel like we somebody put us in a can and just shook us up and let the lid off. And that's sort of the growth. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say by the end of this year, we're budgeting to see close to 100 units. Wow. Um, and that's some pretty aggressive growth we can handle it being part of happiness and having that infrastructure already in place. Um, I'm comfortable in saying that we're going to take this, this industry and we're going to be the leader in the market because we're the first one in that's disrupted with the entirely green science-based strong backing cultural fit business model. So looking forward to it. Yeah. And germs aren't going away anytime soon. So we're, sure. we're, you're in business for a long time. Well, Sharon, it has been a pleasure having you here with us today. And we're, we're so excited to watch you have the explosive growth that I think you're going to have. And uh, I might have to see if you guys can come to our house. Uh, I got lots of teenagers running through my house and I'm thinking there's lots of germs running around coming into my house, leaving my house and stuff like that. So we'd be happy to. All right. Well, thank you for being a guest. Uh, we'll have you on again sometime. Thank so. you so much. Have a really great day. All right. Thanks so much. Thanks, Sharon. Thanks for listening to the Hire Yourself podcast. For more resources, check out our website at hireyourself.com. And remember to subscribe to this podcast to receive each episode. Please leave us a rating, and we'd love to hear your feedback or suggestions for topics.